Welcome and thank you for listening to the Rojan B. Peterson podcast. Dr. Rojan Peterson is discussing the archetypes of order and chaos as it relates to the masculine and feminine. Boy, if you ever face the darkness in yourself, that union shadow, man, now that's a struggle that goes back to the temptation of Eve as far as I'm concerned. Adam couldn't be tempted, you see, not because of his upstanding moral virtue, but because he embodied the masculine traits of order. And he was put to task naming the whole GD planet, putting form to it. And if you think that's an easy task, then you've got another thing coming, bucko. So, so if Adam is order, then Eve represents chaos, which is usually feminine according to the ancient religions. And of course, chaos is just a euphemism for menstruation. Well, I don't have to tell you. Just watch my Kathy Newman interview. Now there's the embodiment of menstrual chaos. I mean, the closest thing I've ever witnessed as far as I'm concerned. And I've had to treat the entire Canadian Royal Ballet Company for psychosis after their cycles went out of sync from Adderall addiction. Just made them all eat beef for only six months and now half of them are transitioning to I, I don't know what. Hey, you want to get high, man? Let's stimulate your mind. Get up! What have we got here? A fucking comedian. Rojan Kim. Hello, and welcome to the Rojan Kim cast. It's me. Thank you for tuning in. There's uh, the world is spinning by us, everybody. So much stuff is happening. And I'm barely paying attention. I can barely. I don't know. What do you guys think? You guys, are you guys into the, the Democrats? The Democrats are coming. The Democrats, there's 20 of them getting whittled down. I think there's gonna be seven next time. 20 of them all coming up there, just making their pitch, pitching themselves, being like, yeah, you gotta, yeah, me, pick me, be me instead of, you know who, you know who, he who shall be not to be damned. Um, yeah. Elections. Politics. I don't know. Here's what I think. I think, you know, politics is killing it. Guys, you know what? And by it, I mean our country. <laughs> it's killing the country. <laughs> what are we doing? I, I don't, I can't. This is like the Russia thing. There's the whole Mueller thing. Mueller, Mueller. And everybody's like, ah. And then, uh, then it was like, <laughs> like nothing. What, what's come of it? What's come of it? Nothing's come of it. The Mueller report is a Rorschach test, right? You just see what you want to see. That seems to be what it is. Even though, you know, there's supporting text for whatever you want to believe. So you can just cut and paste. That's why I don't, people are like, if you haven't read the whole Mueller report, then I can't talk to you. Oh, if you, what, have you read the whole Mueller report? Have you? But if you have, then kill yourself. That's what I think. That's <laughs> that's what you did with your time. You read the entire, uh, are you a constitutional legal scholar? Are you well versed in some kind of judicial review or something? I mean, do you, are you qualified? I mean, if you're qualified, I get it. There's a point. If you're not qualified, then you're just what are you reading? You're just reading a bunch of words that you're piecing together. You're like, yes, this makes sense. <laughs> this makes sense with the you know confirmation bias I have going on. I mean, look, for me, I've always been skeptical about the idea that. Trump won the election because of the Russians as opposed to the Democrats losing the election because of a bad campaign. You know I mean, it just seemed kind of obvious that they were running a bad campaign and that they were going to lose to me. Uh, but, you know, people thought I was cynical. I don't know if it's because I'm cynical or if I just got my ear to the ground amongst, you know, uh, the, the comedians, the comedy community, the people who talk to people, you know. The people who talk to people, I'm pretty sure that Trump had a good chance of winning, even though it would it was a long shot. They still thought he might do it because people are on board. Now me, I, I didn't vote for him, but I didn't vote for Hillary either. Honestly, I just I just couldn't vote. I just I actually voted for um, local stuff and I just I think I'm tapping out of national politics. I think that's it. I mean with these debates, the ridiculousness of it, the uh, how ridiculous the political discourse is. And this is now. This is over it's still over a year later from the election i mean can you imagine next year the summer leading into the election at what pitch everything is going to be if this is what it is now like by next year it's just going to be 
people crying openly on television instead of doing the news. Actually, that's what it is now. <laughs> that's what it is now when Trump got into that spat with Elijah Cummings about Baltimore. It was, uh, there was dudes on TV crying. You know, and that's a shame. That's a shame. That's where we're at. Journalists, quote unquote, are just actors now crying on TV, right? And uh, because the president said a mean thing. That's where we're (laughs) at. Meanwhile, uh, something like 80% of people living check to check. Nobody has health care. We're all going to die. Um, you know, whatever. There's, but we got a, the racism in the tweet is what's important. <laughs> like, which wasn't even. I don't even want to get into it. It's so stupid. It's so dumb that see, I've already. I feel like I've. I should now. I should kill myself. I've wasted just as much time in these past four minutes talking about this shit than all of you may have reading the Mueller report. So I should equally kill myself as well. Let's kill ourselves together. Let's put a little group together. Little meetup dot com kill ourselves in the park who's with me come on we'll be a little make a little get some sweet content it'll be the most um well-liked post on your instagram feed you know especially if it's your last one you know if you let someone take over your account and it kind of kind of sucks you know what i'm saying then you get like more content coming from the dead guy what the fuck like if you die and you leave a sweet last pick for your sort of uh you know, this is your legacy, the last Instagram post. You know, I think that should be respected. You know, that's that's good for you. You're going after it. Anyways, uh, join me in the park next Tuesday where we'll commit mass suicide <laughs> to protest the climate <laughs> that's that's going to irrevocably destroy the planet. Um, and that's where we're at now. We're at a place where during the Democratic debates, once in a while, like Andrew Yang's just like, Head for the mountains, y'all. We're all gonna die. A thousand bucks a month. You know, like that's that's what I have. You know, and uh, Kamala's up there, and then Tulsi's just like bap 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 bap. Kamala, fuck you. And then everybody's like, whoa. And then everybody's like, Tulsi's a Russian bot. There's a Russian bot. Russian bot. Russian bot. Russian bot. That's what you're hearing now. Russian bot. The Russian bots are everywhere. That Mueller was like, beware the Russian bots. And now everybody's like, that's a Russian bot. Russian bot. But the whole Russian bot thing is bullshit. And there is actually a paper trail to lead that leads to how that is actually bullshit. Um, in the Mueller report, it says there was, um, you know, there was some fuckery by a company. Uh, you know, some bots were made, right? And that, that Mueller investigated and he tied it to the Russian government. But then in federal court, he admitted, Mueller admitted that there were no ties to the Russian government it's all it's all a simple google search will reveal okay here's all right let me just talk about what's been bothering me why am i talking politics i i I don't care i mean i do and i don't and but i don't want to but i am and why why all right here's why so so this is something that happened to me okay i was minding my own business and i get a message from facebook you know facebook message the messenger um, and it's from a guy, you know, a friend, an old friend though, like, you know, not a current friend, friend I had 20 years ago. Uh, were we super close? I don't, wouldn't say that, but we were in high school together, you know, and he's, it's like, whatever. He's a nice dude. And he basically said, Hey, I've been thinking about getting into comedy again. And, you know, it was, uh, want some advice or some help, you know, and maybe I can tag along with you, go to open mics or something. And... Yeah, I didn't know how to respond to that, you know? When a random person just asks me, hey, I want to do stand-up, what do I do? I just tell them, just go up. And just there's, That's it. Just go up as much as possible. And if you can't get up in your town, try to make it happen, you know? Just make an open mic night. Just something. Just keep getting up. That's all you got to do over and over for years. It's really simple. I mean, it's hard, but it's simple. You know, it's just an action. You just repeat the action over and over, and something might come out of it. I mean, of course, there's discipline and all that, but just getting up is the thing. Most people spend a lot of time thinking about how much they want to get up there, and they should be up there, and they, oh, I ought to be up there. A lot of people who actually watch comedy want to be up there too, and the, you know, and then part of that is actually distracting them from taking in the comedy because they're thinking about what they might say or how they would do whatever you know it's hard to get out you know it's 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 essentially the same as an open mic (laughs) it's not that different but at least 
on that level, there's an expectation of being a crowd member. You know, it's you're a, you're a normal person unless unless you start heckling or whatever. You know, and usually hecklers and people who start chiming in a little bit too much or trying to get all the attention, they are people who want to do it and they're not doing it, and so they feel sore that you're doing it, and then they want to become the person everybody's looking at, and you know, okay, you know, so that's there's all of that. Okay, so randos. People I don't know, I just go, you know, just go up. But with this guy, you know, he was an old friend. So I, at first I felt like I'd be like, just go up, dude. And honestly, I don't want to, this is kind of harsh, I guess, right? But I don't think stand-up comedy is about friends. And this is probably why I have no friends. But, I, okay, hear me out. I'm, what I'm saying is not that you shouldn't make friends in comedy. Of course you're going to make friends in comedy because you have similar interests. You fuck around. You know, you talk in a way that you can, that you can't with other people. They, there's a level of understanding, right? That's natural. That happens in any context. So I'm not saying don't make friends. What I'm saying is that stand-up comedy is not about friends. So... Imagine you're doing comedy and you have a room filled with friends. They all like you. You know, there's automatically an advantage you have just by being liked. You know, that's one of the reasons Steve Martin said he quit comedy was because just everybody knew him and liked him and he couldn't tell it was funny anymore because everybody was like, yeah, you know. And so he decided to quit stand-up comedy for like 40 years and then start teaching master classes on it. And I think that's completely fair, right? That's He's earned it. Uh, he's a master of the craft. Uh, I am not. I'm a journeyman. I would say I wouldn't call myself. Wouldn't call myself a complete apprentice. Uh, I'm definitely not a master. You know, so I'm in the middle. I'm in that middle zone where I'm still. I got a little bit. You know, I'm like a purple belt. You know, like a. Uh, I'm. Uh, no, I know enough. I know the basics, but I'm kind of finding what else. Finding, you know, trying to figure out what that all is. So back to this guy. What do I tell him? I don't know. I, so I waited a couple weeks. And then I responded. And I was like, I basically was just like, you know what? I'm just going to tell you flat out. You know, just you got to get up. That's all there is. You just, um, the reason you may not want to get up at an open mic is because of failure. You know, because you might bomb or something might not be funny. But that's how you get better. There's no avoiding it. You know, it's the old, uh, you know, learning to ride a bike. You can't do it without falling, right? Can't make an omit omelet omelet you can't make an omelet without breaking a few eggs you know you there's like there's a cost to learning a skill and part of that cost is failure and you have to be okay with that you know you can't be coddled that's why having friends in the room is a form of coddling it's like training wheels the so stand-up comedy is going from town to town doing comedy for strangers it's not doing for comedy for friends or other comics or anything you know it's for strangers who probably shouldn't do comedy and should be paying money to see somebody else do comedy so they could release tension, go about their day, be entertained, go on, maybe have a thinker or two, whatever. But like, you know, that's, that's what it is. So, you know, I told him that I told him, look, uh, you just got to do it. You got to fail. got to keep doing it. And, uh, in terms of tagging along, you know, why don't you let me know when you go to a mic and I'll let you know if I can, meet you you know i, I just, I just uh, that's fair right i don't need to be all like hey come along with me or like i'm not trying to babysit anybody it's hard enough i'm on a day-to-day -day level just trying to figure out where to go up you know <laughs> where to go what to do what to talk about like this is a i it's it's hard enough trying to figure out all that stuff for myself now i gotta get you involved i mean the, <laughs> You know, have you under my wing? And I'm no one to have under... That's the thing. I, were I considered a master or were I at a place where, I don't know, I was like being booked around the country and I could have openers or whatever, you know, I could, then I get it. I could maybe see, you know, my perspective would be like, hey, yeah, maybe I'll like sort of be a mentor or do some of this or do that. But this guy's older than me. This guy, <laughs> this guy's like 42 or whatever. He's <laughs> that. <laughs> he still lives in the valley he still lives i mean i that's not to say that that's a bad thing i don't know anything about i don't know if he's living at home or what you know i don't know if he never left or he came back i don't know any of that stuff all i know is that he fucking 
asked me for comedy advice and asked me if uh, he'd come along. And uh, it was like, I don't know how to be honest without being an asshole. But I was just like, you know, I did the best I could. I was like, you know, just uh, let me know. And I'll, you know, if I can make it, I'll come. Yeah, that, <laughs> right? That's it's fair. That's fair. We haven't seen each other in 20 years. Okay. Wow. We're going to start miking together all of a sudden. That's like, what, is that the expectation? Okay. All right. Anyway. <laughs> so, Send him the, send him that message in response, and then he was like, "Hey, thanks, man. You know, I know about the failing thing. That's why I stopped going. So, so he mic'd before and bombed and stopped, and then I don't know. I don't know what he wanted from me. But anyways, he's like, thank you, blah blah blah. You know, goodbye. Okay. Then I don't know. Hour later or something. I don't know where. I get this big old message, like a long block, and he goes, "Oh, by the way." The reason why Mueller walked back the OLC opinion thing is because Ted Lieu was walking him through. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, what? This is a long paragraph. I mean, run on sentence. That's like some kind of explanation as to why <sighs> during the Mueller hearing, there's this bombshell when Ted Lieu was trying to get Mueller to admit that he didn't indict Trump because of the ruling that says you can't indict a sitting president. And Mueller kind of said that was correct. But then he came back and took it back and said that is not correct. It's not the reason why we didn't indict. It's not because of the OLC opinion. It's because we could not determine whether there was a crime. We didn't make the determination whether it was a crime. That's, you know, that's what he said. And I have no idea how, why this came up. I, I think I made I didn't make a post about it. I might have made a comment on somebody's thing about it. I don't know. But I don't know. He must have been Facebook stalking me or something. This is like out of nowhere. He asked me for comedy advice. I gave him some. And then next thing you know, he's hitting me with... (laughs) He's hitting me with the reason Ted Lou. So then he's like... He was spitting out this whole word salad, and I just replied, man, it's that's a really long read just to work through this statement. And I just repeated... The statement Mueller made where he said, you know, that is not correct. The correct way to say it is we could not reach a determination that the president committed a crime, you know, and and I was like, dude, and, and if you're really interested, watch this video. I linked him to a Jimmy Dore video. <laughs> I like Jimmy Dore. He yells a lot. Some people are like, but Jimmy Dore was mad about this or, or wrong about this or that or this. And it's just like, really, is that the standard you're using he was wrong about something. He was wrong about voting for third candidates or he was wrong that Trump wouldn't put in extremist judge. I don't know what the fuck he was wrong about. People are wrong. The, the fucking media was wrong about WMDs. The media was wrong about... Here's this list of thing, things that the media has been wrong about. Um, Trump winning. Brexit. The housing crisis. The Abu Ghraib the um, NSA, right? The NSA, Abu Ghraib, all that shit came out through like WikiLeaks and fucking Snowden. You know what I'm saying? Like not journalists, not journalists, the fucking housing crisis, right? They didn't even see that coming, right? They didn't see um, fucking disaster in Katrina, right? I mean, uh, to be fair, there was a hurricane, but come on. You know what I'm saying? We could just keep going back further and further and further, yeah? all the way to 9-11, right? WMDs, like all that stuff, right? That's the failure. That's what the media was wrong about. But yeah, Jimmy Dore was wrong about an opinion he had. <laughs> yeah, so let's discredit him automatically. Whatever, that's, okay, so that's one thing, right? But anyways, he, he watches, the, he responds, and he was like, I try to watch it with an open mind, but oh, wow, that shit was bonkers. The video is full of lies. There's lies. He's lying. He's lying. He's lying. And then, and then he tries, he's like, as I said before, that Ted Lieu was building up the, thi- the case for uh, Mueller to indict Trump, but Mueller can't indict, see, because he can't indict because of the OLC opinion, and also he just can't indict. He can't say the word crime, so that's why he said he wouldn't find a crime, because it's not a crime, but it is something else, and the evidence is there, and Congress is there to use the evidence to indict, because Mueller can't indict, and I'm just like, okay, it's, why does it take so long to explain what the guy meant, when he literally says, we reached the determination that the, he didn't commit a crime, you know, that there was no crime, because the, then he goes, oh, but we didn't exonerate, you know, Mueller goes, we didn't exonerate him, but that's also bullshit, because there's no such thing, there's no such thing as exoneration, <laughs> <laughs> we're innocent until proven guilty, so you're already exonerated until proven otherwise, right? That's actually 
presuming that you're guilty um, and then you have to be proved innocent, which is an inversion of our judicial standard and very dangerous if you think about it because imagine if that standard applied to all of us. We're all guilty until proven innocent. We're all, we all could at any moment be arrested. Then, then we should really worry that the NSA has all this data, that all this data that they have on us is basically evidence as guilt as whatever they think we're guilty of. Is that that's where we're headed. And yeah, yeah, Trump is a fucking criminal. Yeah, I'm not saying he's not criminal. I'm not saying, you know, I'm not saying he's dirty or corrupt. You know, I'm not saying any of that stuff. I'm just saying that this is not the way to go about it. You know, it doesn't make any sense pursuing this whole thing, this whole Mueller thing, you know. So anyways, um, he responded this, and it was this weird passive aggressive language of like a simple Google search will reveal all these things are debunked, but he didn't re- reply with any sources, no sources, but just more kind of the same gobbledygook that I think he must've just heard from the news, this idea that Ted Lieu and the OLC opinion and this and that, and then he'll interject. It is weird that Barr and Mueller agree that it isn't because of the OLC opinion, but we'll just discard that for a second and then go on about, you know, and it's just like, um, it's really like, like Charlie or fuck it, you know, Charlie and always sunny when he's in the mail room, fucking doing the beautiful mind thing. It's basically the beautiful mind thing. The fucking, you know, you're just, and then, and it's over here. And then, but, but if you really look into it, look into it. That's why I wanted him to cite things, cite sources, give me some sources. Cause I gave him sources. You know, I gave him the actual text of the testimony. I gave him the Jimmy Dore show that had a, uh, they had footage of the testimony, and they had uh, award-winning journalist Aaron Mate. You got to check out Aaron Mate, guys. Just a little side note: Aaron Mate is fucking awesome. Gray Zone. Uh, his dad's Gabor Mate. He's fucking. If you know who that is, you know that this is a good family. It's a good family. You know what I'm saying? They're not fucking. They're not like lizard people. You know what I'm saying? They're not lizard people. That was the other thing my friend did was accuse Jimmy Dore and Aaron Mate, everybody on that video of being like conspiracy theorists. And was like, have you seen the, sh- it's like a comedy show. Yeah, they're progressive. They're like, uh, you know, kind of almost socialist, but whatever, whatever. He's, the, the truth is truth. Like, you know, a lot of times people don't, won't listen to the other side of the mainstream argument because it's from Fox. So the only way to go is really left of the mainstream media. I mean, thankfully the mainstream media has gone so far right that, there are left, you know, there's like left voices that are pretty reasonable now. <laughs> like they're almost like moderates now. It's ridiculous. And anyways, Jimmy Dore is a fucking comic, okay? He's got a political thing. Yeah, he leans left. Yeah, I mean, he's for Bernie or Mel- Medicare for all. He's for the people. He's for the people. You know what I'm saying? And so if you want to say he's a conspiracy theorist, blah, 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 blah. And it's like really the mainstream media is who you trust, the, the WMD guys. The, the list of failures I listed earlier, that's... Who you trust, huh? That's, all right, that's... I've had discussions about, you know, you can't trust independent media because you can't verify the sources, but the mainstream media checks each other, and that's why... I was like, what? The mainstream media is not the government. It's not checks and balances. It's fucking corporate. It's fucking money. They just... They, you think... They have interests. There are other interests, and if their interests align, you know, as a corporation, they're gonna do what they're told to do they being journalists or look at the Sinclair media thing where everybody read the same fucking script across the country. Local news stations are all reading the same script because this is a corporate mandate. You know what I'm saying? And you think you don't think that happens on a larger level on the national level on NBC and Fox and CNN and all that. Of course it does. Right. Of course it does. It's uh, and that's why the internet is the only thing that's standing in the way of complete propaganda by corporate media. I know now I sound like I'm, on democracy now or whatever but i'm serious man this is why i'm tapping out of all this national shit it's just it just seems corrupt all of there's a, the corruption is endless and now they're doubling down on this whole Mueller thing the russia gate thing they're doubling down on all of it anyways so i responded to my friend i said man if you want to have a polite conversation you can't be passive aggressive and be like, oh, a simple Google search, uh, this shit is bonkers, and a simple Google search will show without having any actual citations. And then, you know, this is easily debunked and without saying what, you know, what points you're making. Like, you know, just, to, it's just 
saying sort of like dismissing the argument altogether without actually making an argument, right? And that's, of course, a complete uh, logical fallacy. Uh, one is it's an ad hominem where you're like, ah, you're crazy or whatever, you know, or appeal to motive where you're like, oh, these guys are conspiracy theorists and you can't believe, you know, it's like yeah, ways to discount people, you know? And so I just fucking, I let them, I let them have it, but in a very polite way, I said, hey, Here's what I would like for you to do. Tell me what you're saying is could be debunked from the video I presented. Show me the sources that you're citing and tell me about your analysis of this whole OLC thing because, yeah, one of the things he said was like, you know, uh, I don't like to talk to people who haven't read the whole report, you know, because they're just saying what other people have told them, which is hilarious, right? That's what he's doing. So I was just, I basically just said, look, it doesn't matter if you read the whole report or not, if you don't have a background in this stuff and no offense, but that's not the vibe I'm getting from you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, just, <laughs> this doesn't sound like a legal mind interpreting <laughs> this stuff to me. Just the ramblings of somebody trying to make sense of it, just like everybody else, just like, just like we all are, which is no, you know, I'm not saying I'm better or not anything. I'm just saying, that's what it is. We're all trying to make sense of it because there's lies, you know, there's lots of lies going on. Um, so anyway, sent him that. He said he would respond with his citations, whatever. I'm still waiting, of course. I would love to see how he has proved the that there was a conspiracy and a crime was committed, <laughs> even though the actual investigator could not. Um, I would he might have cracked it. My friend might have cracked all of Russia Gate. They're all going down bombshell guys the entire trump dynasty is going to crumble boom um well hey we can all hope i I, either way i'm here to just fucking eat popcorn (laughs) and watch it as it all goes down so yeah i'm kidding i don't really like popcorn but i no i'm kidding again i like popcorn but it's a figure of speech anyway Anyway, this, here's the thing, guys. I've noticed, you know, people are very emotional in their arguments lately. Super emotional. Not really using logic. You know, and I, I guess it's not their fault. We actually have no critical thinking left in this country. It's all commercials. It's all get this and want that. And, it, you know, advertising techniques rely on logical fallacies to persuade you to commit uh, unreasonable actions, right? The thing, things that don't make sense. To buy more shit than you need to. You shouldn't be questioning <laughs> The validity of people's claims. You need it. You need to be a blue text bubble. You need a blue text bubble. And those green text bubble people are garbage. Don't even associate with them. Be nervous. Nervous. D- be nervous. Be afraid. Ugh. Green text bubble people. Get away from them. Get away from them. Yes. Listen to the marketing. Be loyal to the brand. Yes. Soothing marketing. Everything is okay. You're in the blue text bubble now. No need to fret. You're not going to die. The world isn't going to end. Resources are endless. You'll live forever. Everybody loves you. Right? And that's what we want. That's what we want. And, uh, you know, I I don't blame people for clinging to that, wanting it desperately, but at the expense of what? Our country, our society, critical thinking, reason, (laughs) and public discourse. (laughs) Yeah, just a couple things like that, you know? Notice lately, you know, like Tulsi. Okay, so Tulsi smacked down Kamala Harris. I like Tulsi Gabbard. Okay, I like her. I like her. Uh, is it because she's hottie? She's a hottie? Yeah, she's a hottie. But that's not why. Is it because she served? It's fucking awesome. It's because she's anti-war. Honestly, because she's anti-war. She's the only one, really, and the only one who served and is anti-war. And she was on the Joe Rogan experience, so that's also a plus. Andrew Yang also, you know, so that's always... It warms the cockles of my heart. But anyway... People are saying Tulsi's a Russian bot or Russian bots are associated with Tulsi. A lot of Russian bots going with Tulsi. What does it mean? Mara Tulsi is a Russian bot. That's the reason. Russian. Russia. This is Russia shit again. The Russia shit, when it, nothing has come of it, it, when it's not being blasted all over the news, but Mueller himself admitted that there was no real connection between these Russian troll farms and the government and that their impact was minimal. He admitted that stuff, you know, just not on TV and not, and the news wasn't reporting it, but whatever. Russian bots, huh? That's what it... And people ask, why do these Russian ba- bots associate with Tulsi? Surely there must be some reason. But see, that is what we call guilt by association, right? That's an ad hominem attack. Ad hominem, right? An attack on the person. So at first you're saying this person is a bad person. Bad person? Why? Because look at all these other bad people around them. 
Why are they around them? She must be bad too if these bad people like her. But that is a terrible standard because if you think about it, it goes the other direction. Well, let's look at you, or you and who follows you. Let's look, go through the list, find out. Like, oh, look at this. Looks like the bankers follow you. The bankers love you. Why is that? We have to ask ourselves, why do the banks love so many of the candidates in the Democratic Party, right? Why? Is it because they're beholden to them? Is it because they'll just do whatever their banking masters tell them? Is that why? Well, let's go through you know, your followers. Let's see if we find a racist. If we find one racist in your follower count, Does that make you racist? Are you now responsible for what that person does? See, none of this makes any sense. Of course it doesn't make sense, and that's why it's guilt by association. This is what happened during McCarthyism, right? People were commies, and you're like guilty just for knowing a commie, right? Now you're just fucking infected by the commie, uh, like, bug or whatever. Like, it's it's treated as an almost quarantine infestation, you know, the the obsession people have now with this idea that, we're living in pre-Nazi Germany, and we're, they're about to do ethnic cleansing at any moment, and everything is so high pi- it's so high pitched that we're probably going to miss it when they do eth- actually ethnically cleanse us. You know what I'm saying? When I'm ethnically cleansed, guys, you think it's going to be you, <laughs> white people? No, it's going to be me. All right, and then great. Thanks a lot, guys. You fucking you're fucking screaming about the, the boy who cried Russia, right? You're screaming about Russia the whole time. Next thing you know, I'm taken off to a camp. Nobody cares, right? Who would care about a middle-aged guy getting executed (laughs) just for being Asian? Nobody, that's it. (laughs) Nobody, except maybe Tulsi, all right? I don't care if Russians love Tulsi, all right? Second, she makes some good points about the war, all right? I don't know if that means she should be president, but I'm just saying, you know, guilt by association. Think about what a logical fallacy that is, you know? Think about the logical fallacies going on in life. See if you can spot them. Does it make sense? Does it make sense? Just because something is followed by somebody else doesn't make it bad, right? You got you to think through things. Anyway, guys, it's been great talking to you guys. I have been having a blast podcasting. Got some guests coming up. It's going to be a great time. Please follow me out there. Instagram and Twitter, at Rojan Kim. Go to rojankim.com. Follow me. Go to my YouTube, iTunes me, Stitcher me, or Apple, or whatever the fuck. Get out there. Subscribe to my podcast. Thank you so much for listening. Until next time.